color matched center console, check. Airbag light fixed, check. Interior all back together looking better than ever, double check. Now it's just time to get the actual thing running. Thankfully the parts to get it back together and hopefully fix the boost leak are here. All I have to do is unbox them and install them. It shouldn't be that difficult. That looks correct, yes. And this one isn't all torn up, outstanding. And of course, have to lift the engine back up and do another boost leak test, make sure all is well and go from there. Now as much as I hate packing peanuts, it's fine whenever you're getting a part that you need. All right, here lie all the parts in front of me. Don't make fun of me for getting a, a yellow one. I didn't get yellow because it like matches the car. And I'm like, ooh, cool yellow. I got it because it was significantly discounted. I'm guessing because it's yellow, not black. And because it was one of the few in stock. A lot of these F pipes are out of stock and I needed this ASAP so I could get this car back together and running with proper boost. So that being said, let me swap everything over to the new F-pipe, get the new, whatever you call this, installed as well. The engine button back up, get ready for a drive. Probably the fastest this car has ever been in my ownership, or in any ownership, really. Boy, I don't really remember how these go together. Gotta go something like that, right? Not sure if that's quite right, but let me try fitting it in the car and we'll go from there. Definitely put this one in the wrong way. Whoops. New plan, I think I'm just gonna install this piece by itself first. I think that will be slightly easier. So of course, in all my glory, I dropped one of the O-rings behind the toolbox. Yeah, that'll, that's kind of needed. I think it's done. Got to give the certified glass cleaner cleaning. Can't be having dirty yellow when the rest of the car is clean yellow. All right, time for a boost leak test. To say I'm nervous would be a very large Understatement. It's never held boost at all, except for at the throttle body when I did that test. Never has it held in any other way. Now, to be fair, I don't think this is going to be flawless. I'd just be happy if it held something. It's not holding anything. Well guys, I am beyond frustrated. I also banged my head underneath the car. That was fun. I, I can literally hear the air escaping towards the cabin side of the engine, and I have no idea why. I know everyone says smoke machine, smoke machine, 
I thought I had it fixed. I didn't, so I just ordered a smoke machine, and we'll see what result I get with that in a couple of days. After feeling extremely defeated the last time I worked on this and realized I didn't fix the boost leak, well, I had to fix the boost leak at least somewhat because, you know, that boot was torn, so under boost it would be. Anyway, I'm rejuvenated and back with a smoke tester. Everyone said, get a smoke tester, get a smoke tester. Hey, why don't you get a smoke tester? Do you want to borrow my smoke tester? Yeah, I don't know why I didn't get one sooner. I thought I could just figure it out this way, but I can't figure out where the leak is, so this should, uh, this should figure it out for me. I've never used one of these before, so it's gonna be interesting. Also, bonus content. Mr. Tom Weber sent me this. It's an incredible solution to a problem that I have with my 996 and probably many of you guys do, and it has to do with holding drinks. If you're hopping in your Porsche to go for a nice ride, well, not my Porsche, because it doesn't currently run or drive, and you've got the best energy drink known to man, well, what do you do with it? There's absolutely nowhere to put it. You can just put it on the seat. You can put it on the dash. Like it just exploded. No, it didn't explode, because it's the best energy drink. So what do you do? Well. I used to have cup holders, but when I did the double din retrofit, uh, I lost my cup holders. Now I could retrofit the ones that go in up here. I don't think that's time or cost effective. They're expensive. And I think I'd have to do some retrofitting behind the stereo as well. I don't really want to go down that path, but thankfully Tom at the Etsy store rendition has a solution and I've never seen anything like it. It's awesome. So his solution is modular, which is awesome. This goes on the center console and the passenger side. This is a cup holder from you know, I don't know from what. I don't know what this is out of. Maybe he made this too. I don't know. He makes incredible things, so probably. Basically, it slots in there with a nice positive lock, and these two are one. However, if you want to, you can remove it. And I think future iterations are he could put a different style cup holder in here. He could do a phone mount. You could mount all sorts of things. So I'm going to install this, which will take all of 30 seconds. And if you guys aren't familiar, he designed and creates the ashtray delete for the center console that sincerely, incredibly cleans up the center console, gets rid of the dumb ashtray, gives you more room, a little bit more storage there. I'll have a link to that below and a link to this. Sheesh, what a freaking, what a freaking perfect fit. Tell me that's not like an OEM plus upgrade. That thing is such a perfect, Fitment and like between like right there like that's all like he made it perfect so it fits right there so I'm hopping in get ready to go for a nice drive I'm gonna pretend this car works and a freaking cup holder in my Porsche 996 amazing a spot for my phone like this is this is freaking perfect and what's awesome about this is it doesn't interfere with the Renline cell phone holder, so when I don't have a drink in here, I can still use my phone. Or I can put it in this slot, which I have now. Bam, drink. Oh, you have a passenger that wants to sit here and this is bothering them. Oh, look at that. Removed it. Hardly even tell. It's hardly even anything there. This thing is freaking sweet. I love it. Thanks a bunch, Tom. Link to this below. Check out Rendition, they make awesome stuff. You won't be disappointed in the quality, amazing. Now the fun, easy part of today's video is, is done, it's time to Try out the smoke machine. You guys are gonna come along for the ride because I don't know how to use this thing. I think my goal is to actually, I disconnected the one wastegate line because I was testing that. I think I'm gonna use that to put the smoke in and see if I can see the smoke that way. And if I, for some reason, no smoke comes out or not enough to see, I'll then additionally add air pressure via how I've been testing it. So air pressure plus the smoke should work, should find the leak, hopefully. 
It's probably in some place that I don't have access to. I don't know. I'm expecting the worst, but hoping for the best. Oh my. I don't know what I'm doing. Comes with a marble? It says it's a fluid level marble? Okay. Oh, fill above marble. That seems like a really corny way of doing that. But... Smoke hose. Connect this little doohickey ding dong. No, what I don't like, and I, don't, I didn't realize, I would have rather had one that you just plug in to an outlet versus hooking this up to a car, but. Ah, we have smoke. All right, I don't want to waste this. Is it toxic? I feel like it's probably toxic. Smoke is connected and it's not leaking underneath. As bad as this leak is, it should be like coming out somewhere immediately. And of course, I see nothing. Seriously, nothing. All right, there's smoke in the intake. Maybe we should put this stinger back on. That will at least help. Dude, I see no smoke anywhere. Absolutely none. Let me connect some air pressure to it. see smoke except I don't know from where <laughs> I don't know guys so far this isn't helping I think this has created more questions than answers it almost seems like it's around the plenum area but I just I just can't tell I really can't and everything that I see looks freaking solid I'm gonna start taking some stuff apart it's really all I can do Update, I cannot even hold air at the throttle body like I could way back when. So it's a massive leak somewhere. I, I still haven't found it. So I'm gonna keep diving in there. I'm probably honestly gonna end up taking the throttle body and the plenum back out, <sighs> at least the throttle body. I think that's my next stop. I'm gonna take the throttle body off. And check it out, you can listen. I can feel air somewhere Back here where my left hand is. I don't know what that is. Obviously that's not good. O-ring looks plenty good. No issue there. Seems fine here, no, no deformalities or anything. Vacuum hoses are all good, connected. Plenum is tight. When I did this, I zip tied all the vacuum lines. Man, I just, I just don't freaking know. My next step was to actually take the IPD plenum back off and just inspect everything around there. As much of a pain as that is, and as much as I didn't want to, I really needed to. Really fun taking apart work that you already did once. It's a freaking blast.
you tell I'm dirty, sweaty, and tired? I finally got the plenum in place. If you guys have ever done it, it's a major pain because you got to, it's very tight in there, but there's silicone boot on each side. Anyway, that's in. It's not tightened down, but it's in there. Something else someone mentioned to me a while ago when I installed this, and I forgot about it or something. The bolts for the throttle body might be too long and bottom out. And from my eyeball measurements, that may be true. So I'm adding two washers to each bolt to make sure it's clamping down the throttle body. For all I know, it, it had a massive leak right there. The O-ring looks fine, looks perfect. So put the throttle body back in, get everything situated how it needs to be because you have to rotate the plenum up and down to get it level with the uh, the stock Y pipe. It's a it's a whole thing. I'm just I'm just gonna get to work. So if you watch it, I still have the up and down movement here. So I've got to get that situated before I can lock it down. Hopefully I can just tighten the one down and it'll hold everything where it needs to be. Because you got to get it at least situated somewhat because you have to pull this back off. Obviously to get access, oh boy, to get access to everything else that you need to do. What a project this has been. Almost wrapped up with the reinstallation of the plenum. Uh, uh, looking at the F-pipe, I think I actually had the diverter valves in the wrong way. I think I need to flippy floppy them. It just doesn't seem quite right, right? Like, shouldn't this part be facing that way? I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure I messed this up. Let me fix that quick as well. close. In all reality, I should do another throttle body test, but I'm just going to send it, do the test like we did before and see if anything changes. I'm hopeful, but I don't know. I'm not fully bolted up, but I have enough things together <laughs> to do another test. It's not even screw around. Hope for the best, expect the worst, you know. I think I got it, boys. I don't hear the air escaping like before. I may have done it. You know, obviously we're gonna have some through the intake, some through the turbos. It is way better, way better than before. Before I could hear, I can't, I can't really even hear anything escaping except for like where I'm blowing it in here. Oh yeah, yes. Now my air gauge isn't holding any PSI, but you gotta think uh, the one wastegate line is not fully seated back one. The turbos are completely sealed off. The intake isn't sealed off, but it's not the air, like before you could, it was like a massive leak before. 
Whatever I did, I think it's fixed. There's only one way to find out, and that's to take it for a test, but again, it's like freaking almost three in the morning, and I am way too dirty to be getting in a car that I just redid most of the interior. I'm gonna button everything back up, and then freaking first light, we're going for a drive, and we better be hitting 0.7 bar of boost. a couple of key thoughts. The things that I think that could have been or were leaking, none of the vacuum lines. I replaced them all. Zip tied them, did all that. All check valves on top, all, all that stuff is replaced. So I'm guessing I didn't have the IPD plenum centered and seated well enough and or the throttle body was leaking because those bolts bottomed out and or throttle body to Y pipe was leaking because I don't think I have it aligned a lot better now, but I'm feeling a lot better guys. Feeling a lot, lot better. Actually, funny thing is, I just popped this driver's side intercooler pipe off to, so I can get the actual uh, air box back in there, and poof, air came out of it. And it has never done that before. Mmm! Take that, Porsche. Porsche! I was feeling pretty confident, so time to put it all back together in preparation for its first test drive, which would have to be tomorrow, because at this point, again, it's like 2 a.m. Both camera batteries died, but I got the car all finished up and completely put back together. It's ready for a test fire and then a test drive. I also got all the tools cleaned up at least somewhat, clean up the engine bay a little bit, so we're good to go. All I really need to do is get it down off the quick jacks and fire it up and make sure nothing weird is going on. <laughs> Hopefully everything works as it should, then we'll go for a test drive and see what kind of boost we're hitting. Hopefully it's 0.7 exactly where it should be because last time I drove it, it was like 0.3. Felt pretty slow. I also just remember this thing is like 100% out of gas on E, so hopefully it has enough to make it to the nearest gas station. Unfortunately, this feeling of joy and enthusiasm was short-lived. For sale. Piece of shit horse. All right, let me rewind a little bit to explain what happened. Like I said, guys, no gas, so that's the first stop. But everything else seems normal so far. Well, at least we made it to the gas station. So that's the first step in this process. She is empty as far as i know my guess the fuel capacity of these things is 15 gallons and i just put in 14 and a half so yeah it was uh it was empty the idle is still kind of a little wonky but i'm guessing it's it's got to relearn and do all that good stuff. I don't know that, but that's a potential guess. I'm pretty nervous because there's just so many things that could go wrong. As I continued driving, I kind of noticed something abnormal that I was fearful of. The idle seemed to be stuck. Okay, maybe not stuck, but it had an exceptionally high idle. I'm talking like almost 2000 RPM. I was still hopeful that it was the throttle body, but I was beginning to lose hope. Mm. 
This is the look of a man who just realized he probably didn't fix his Porsche. No check engine light yet. No airbag light, no ABS light, PCM, none of that. All that's good so far. I still had to get into boost though, just to see if it was gonna be at 0.7 bar, which I doubted. Second gear pull. Alright, but that was third gear. Let's try fourth. Maybe it'll get a little more boost. Nope. 0.5 bar. At this point, I was hopeful that maybe I could see something in the engine bay that had popped off, maybe a loose intercooler pipe. Of course, that wouldn't explain the high idle. You can hear the high idle here and just how bad it is. And as much as I wiggled these intercooler pipes, deep down I knew that that wasn't going to fix the problem and I would have to dive deeper into this engine bay once again. signs point to something still being wrong because the idle is high unless it's still relearning I don't I don't know guys I need I need a timeout from this car <laughs>